Good afternoon, everybody. We are down to people today. <coughs> but we will trudge forward nonetheless. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to do this and I didn't want to do this, but I did it anyway. I have data to your assignments. <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't keep me up at night. Um, so anyway, so let me give you this, and I, this should be updated, and you can uh, discard, or you can uh, you know, cross out the old one. Or something like that.
that chromatic chord right there. It doesn't fit diatonically or normally, naturally in the time. But I can analyze it as a secondary chord if it is the right type. So do you remember the three, the three steps we used to go through? First of all, ask yourself, is that chord a dominant or a dominant seventh step? Is it a major triad or a major minor seventh? That's right. It's a major minor seventh chord. It's D, F sharp, A, C. Okay. So, so far, it looks like it could be a 5, 7, specifically a 5, probably 4, 2 of something. Now we just have to prove and make sure that that something exists. How do I find out what it would be a 5 of? Um, you're going to take the Okay, close, but you're forgetting, I think, an important step. You take the root of this chord, but go down a fifth first. Because if this is a five of something, we need to find out what it would be a five of. And to do that, we're saying we're pretending D is dominant of, and D is the fifth of, isn't it G? And so if you go down a perfect fifth from D, you get G. Now, how does a chord on G fit into this? What Roman numeral would it be? Six. Wait, three. 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 Yeah, no, that's okay. <laughs> but we know the three chords in major keys are. So, I guess what I'm saying is after you go down a fifth and you find G, the final step is would a major or a minor triad on G fit in this key? And the answer is yes. A minor triad on G belongs in the flat major. So this is, then therefore, the final answer is this is a 5 or 2 of a 3 in the flat Does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions about this? It's okay if you do. My final review type of exercise or question or problem is this. Which of those two is the correct analysis symbol for that coordinate to give G? Is, is there a difference between how a chord like this would be spelled and a chord like this would be spelled? Yeah, there is a difference. They're not spelled the same. It is the second one. There's a difference. See, this is a 2 6 five. But this, the chromatic pitch, makes it a major minor 7 chord, and therefore it actually is. So there is a difference between something that a lot of students, in my experience, they brush by this and they'll look at that in G and they'll say, oh, that's just a 2 6 five. No, it's not. <laughs> It would be if there was no C sharp. Then all the notes would fit in G, and it would be a diatonic chord, like a two seven. But because it's got a chromatic pitch in it, it can't be a diatonic chord. It has to be a secondary chord. It has to be a secondary chord. This is a minor minor seventh chord. 
this is a major one except for the dominant set. There's a difference. Even though the notes are very, very similar, they're not exactly the same. Okay. Um, so I what I what I would like to do is, since we have no homework for today, what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you a short uh, secondary dominant spelling quiz. Because I know we've been hitting these kind of hard. Spelling them, analyzing them, that kind of thing. So uh, like, all you need is a pencil and we can take 10 minutes or whatever it takes to get through this. There are, there are six short problems. Numbers one through three on the left, remember to include your accidental on the board. Where are the loans?
If I'm in A major, what is scale degree 7? It should be G sharp. Most of the time, unless this is in an inner voice with a root position 5, 7, most of the time the leading tone of the key resolves and moves up by a half step to the root of the following chord. The only time it could ever be frustrated is if it was a root position 5-7 and T of the key was in an inner voice. And I don't really want to get hung up on frustrating T because that's not a big part of the presentation here this afternoon. But T typically goes up by a half step to do the root of the next chord. The other tendency tone in a regular normal 5-7 is the seventh of the chord. We have root is E, G sharp is the third, B is the fifth, D is the seventh, and therefore it is a tendency tone, and it goes down by step. It can be a half step, it can be a whole step, it doesn't matter, it just remember that it goes down by a step. To finish off the part writing for this chord, I'll probably have the tenor go down and share the A with the bass and keep the E in the soprano, so I don't have to do it. But these are your two main tendency tones. And that's nothing new, you know, we really uh, hit that hard the very first five or so weeks of this semester. Well, secondary dominance, part writing secondary dominance is just the same as part writing regular or primary dominance. We follow the same rules. So let me change the key signature, change the key, but use the same chords as I have in the first measure. So in other words, what I mean is I'm going to go to D major here, and I'm still going to end up with an A chord, just like I have here. But in D major, what's the Roman numeral analysis of this one? <clears throat> 
this chord is the same exact as this chord. But in D major, this chord is not a 5, 6, 5, but a what? That is a 5, 6, 5 of the 5. Oh, okay. Okay. How come I thought it was the same? Oh, it's because of the inversion. Okay. Yeah, it's actually the same chord as this, just in a different key. And if E, G sharp, B, D is a 5, 6, 5 of A, even in another key, E, G sharp, B, D is still going to be a 5, 6, 5 of an A chord. But now the A chord. I'm not saying, by the way, it's not a chord. You mean I've been saying? Yeah, it's not falling from an oak tree. <laughs> it's a five six five of the five. Of the five. But the point is, I want to show you that the tendency, there are still two tendency tones in this chord as there are in this chord. And they still resolve the exact same way. Let me be specific about this though. You see how this is a 5-7? The seventh of the chord still goes down by step, just like it does in a regular note. There's nothing new about that. If you ever have a 5-7 bow to something, or in any inversion, like 5-6-5, five, 5-4-3, five, 5-4-3, five, four, five, four, the seventh of the chord in whatever voice it's in, that has to go down by step. Now, whereas over here, this I circled as a tendency tone because it's the leading tone of the key, and therefore it has to go up. In this context, in the secondary dominant, this is still a tendency tone, but it's not the leading tone of the key, right? Because G sharp is not scaled to be seven in D major. But it is still considered a very important tendency tone because it is what we call the leading tone to the root of the chord it's going to. And when you part write secondary dominance, an extremely important tendency tone will always be the leading tone to the root of the tonicized chord, the root of the chord that it's supposed to go to. So it's not leading tone of the key, but it still is an important leading tone, and it has a strong tendency, and that's because it's the leading tone of the root of the chord it's supposed to go to. So we still have two tendency tones in secondary dominant sevenths. We have the seventh of the chord, which goes down by step. And instead of T of the key, I could maybe call this, I'm going to call I think for right now I'm going to call it secondary T. What do I mean by secondary T? I mean T the leading tone to the root of the next chord. That's what secondary T means. These two tendency tones are just as important and urgent to resolve as these two tendency tones are. So, still the seventh of a chord here, but in terms of T, when you're part writing a secondary dominant, it's not T of the key that's all important. It's the leading tone to the root of the chord that follows the tall chord. That's a tendency tone that needs to go up by accident. Okay. Now, let's do uh, yeah, let's let's do another one. Just uh, let's see, a completely different key, different context. And someone to help me analyze this chord first before we part right it. You see how it contains a chromatic pitch? You know that it doesn't belong in that region? That means it's a secondary chord. Can anyone tell me what kind of secondary chord that is? F, A, C, E flat. Sorry, 
Yeah, I'm kind of looking like, what would the Roman numeral symbol be for this secondary bond? You know? Zip it's a 542. How does he get that? Well, I'm assuming we found the root of this chord, F. And we know that F is a dominant or fifth above B flat. And B flat is the root. It's not a 142, right? We talked, I think we talked about this last time. It's not a 142, it's a 54204. Now, I think we also talked a little bit about this last class. We know it's going to go to 4, but we don't know if it's going to be root position 4, maybe, or first inversion 4, or maybe we do know that. But let's follow the tendency tones of this core part right in and verify. Okay? So I need you guys to help me find the two tendency tones. What is one tendency tone on this FAC E flat chord? The E flat, that's right. This is the seventh of the chord, so how is it supposed to move? The other one? Down by step, the seventh of the chord. Okay. F is the root, A is the third, C is the fifth, E flat is the seventh. The seventh of the chord always goes down by step. And now, the other tendency tone is? Good. And how is the A supposed to move? Up. That's right. And it'll always go up by half step. Because it's the leading tone to the root of the chord we're trying to spell. So, it is going to be an E to 4 chord. Can you tell me what inversion this is going to be before I finish it? A B flat D F chord with D in the bass. Can double anything I please in a, in a major four six four. Remember exactly how I did. I think I kept the F static because I need an F chord. And you can either take the C up to the D or you can take the C down to the B flat. It doesn't matter. But the main thing is that you found the two tens. The seventh of the chord goes down by step. What I call secondary T, that is the leading tone to the root of the next chord. It happened to be in the tenor, so that one has to go up. And I think I mentioned last class that since a five, a regular five four two goes to one six, a five four two of four should go to a four six. Right? Five four two of anything goes to first inversion. Because of the tendency tone. The seventh in the base has to go down by step to produce this note. It's forced to go. <coughs> Did I lose anyone so far? Are we keeping our eyelids open? I just see my closed eyes. Okay, let's try another one. I got time for, I think, two more part writing examples. I'm going to see if I can squeeze them in here. And this time I'm not going to be in common time anymore. Let's go to C major. And another chromatic chord in C. It's got a, an accidental. Who can tell me that's a five blubbity blubbity of blubbity blubbity what? Well, let's see. It is a five of five. Can you be a little more specific about like... I didn't think that one. <laughs> that's a five, four, three. Yes. Very good. See, after a while, you'll be able to analyze these like in your sleep. It's a 5, 4, 3 of 5. G is the root. D is the dominant of G. 
g is 5. And it's a major minor 7 chord in second number root. Okay, so 5, 4, 3, and 5. Now, we know that this chord is supposed to go to 5, right? Well, we also know from last unit, from our, uh, what do I want to call that, that harmonic progression chart, you know, the one that with the arrow that goes clockwise, you know, you have your tonic on and three on and all that stuff. 5, 4, 3 goes to 5, yes, but did you know that it is perfectly legal and very, very common to stick this chord in there first? Because cadential 6, 4, to 5 all stands for dominant. So 5, 4, 3, and 5 going to a cadential 6, 4 first before it goes to the 5, it's not unusual. It's very common. It's very legal. It's, all, it's kind of like 5, 4, 3, and 5 is going to 5. It's just that there's a few different notes in this chord first. So this is, this is very frequent in common. 5, 4, 3, yes, if it goes to 5, it'll eventually go to 5. But sometimes it, it passes through the cadential 6 chord. OK, so what is that going to do to our voice lead? Well, let's check it out. We're eventually going to get to 5. Where are my two tendency tones in the 5, 4, 3, and 5? Well, one of them is the C, because that's the seventh of the chord. And so I know that that is supposed to go down by step. The other tendency tone in the 5, 4, 3 of 5 is the F sharp. That's what I call secondary T. It's T, or the leading tone, to the root of a 5 chord in C. That is G. Right? F sharp is the leading tone to G. Well, since we're not going to 5 immediately or directly, some of the tendencies of these tones are just going to have to go on hiatus for temporarily, just for a little bit, while they handle the, the, the credential 6-4 curse. <laughs> Listen here. The credential 6-4 curse. No, the credential 6-4 chord first. <laughs> and then, when they finally get to 5, then their tendencies will be resolved ultimately. Okay, so. What is the base note of uh, 164 in C major? G. And what do we know has to always be doubled in every 6-4 chord? The base. The base. So I'm going to get the other G in the alto. So secondary, the leading tone is actually going to be able to resolve right away. But I don't know if you can picture this. The seventh of the chord is not going to be able to go down right away. Because you see, this chord requires an E and a C first. And the E is going to come from here. And the C is going to be right there. So the 7 can't resolve right away. That's all right. Because the 7 of the chord is eventually going to go down. Guess when it's going to go down? Yeah. Yeah. Where we keep this, the common tone static, the other ones go down by step. Right? All out there, the 7 of the chord has resolved. Um, just out of curiosity, would it be wrong if you moved the C up to an E and took the D pretend line down to C? Yes. That, how so? That would be incorrect. It'd be incorrect because you're not, you're, you're, you're stifling, you're not letting the seventh of the chord do its ultimate course. Okay, so when is it tendency? Either the seventh or the secondary or the number T? Mm -hmm. uh, it has to stay in its spot until it moves to the chord that needs to, what you're saying? Or to the yeah, sometimes the tendency tone will maybe just stay where it is before it actually resolves. Okay. That's okay. But see, the seventh of the chord, it never goes up. Sometimes it just kind of hangs out for a while before it finally goes down. And that usually thing sort of happens usually when we have like a cadential 6-4, or something that gets in between the secondary dominant and its ultimate resolution. Because we said nothing would ever come between these two chords. Nothing ever gets in. And this chord is optional. You don't have to use it, but you can. Yeah, so let me see if I can play that one, at least on the piano. I'm going to hear C. Yeah, I've been drinking. I'm not just kidding. OK, 
Okay, so here's your 5, 4, 3, and 5. And we expect it to go straight to 5. But instead, it's going to be this.
Okay, uh, what's the other tendency tone in the five seven? The C. The C. And that is the chord's seven. And that needs to come down by step. Can it come down by step right away? Sure. Because we need to be in the chord. That means the only other one I need to fill out this five, six, five, or six is the A. So I can keep it right where it is. Okay. Now. It turns out, because I do not need to double the third in this chord, even though I could, I suppose. It turns out that this is going to end up coming down, and it's, it's not going to end up going up. That's okay, though. In this case, the uh, tendency tone, you just, I don't know, this one actually doesn't need to be fulfilled for some reason. I'm trying to think, why is there an exception to this one, though? Well, is just an exception to this one. Could it resolve up? Could it resolve up? Yeah, I suppose it could. Well, what, okay, well, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, there are two tendency tones in this chord. See, now the tendencies of this chord kind of take precedence. One of them is the D sharp, because it's the leading tone to the root of the next chord. And it does go up as it should. But what's the other tendency tone in the 5, 6, 5, 6? The 7th right? The okay. And how is this supposed to be? So I guess I, I guess I would be okay with this. I would also be okay if you didn't double the third. I'd be okay with you. Let me, let me play this on the ground for you and if you want to Thank you. 